Warning, this video discusses the Onigashima raid and will contain manga spoilers. Ever since the raid started, there's been a bunch of questions surrounding the Beast Pirates. Two of those questions are who is who's who and what is the tattoo on his chest. Oda's gone out of his way to offer hints about this symbol, so it must be important. That's why, in this video, I'm gonna offer my theory on how Bao Fan and Who's Who might be connected to Chinese zombie vampires. Before I get started, make sure to comment with your thoughts on Bao Fan's abilities. I'll pick my favorite and share it as comment of the week in the next video. This week's comment comes from Frank and his comparison to Kid. If you'd like regular One Piece and Dr. Stone videos like this one, then make sure to subscribe so you can follow along with each week's video. With that out of the way, let's go over everything we know about Who's Who's crew. <laughs> Jeez, try saying that one three times fast. Anyway, Who's Who makes his first appearance in chapter 978. 977 if you count his feet. In 978, we see he wears a mask and has this eye symbol tattooed on his chest. And like any other self-respecting adult, also tattooed his own name on his chest. Now, I should point out that some of the people of Torino Kingdom have basically the same tattoo on their arms. While Who's Who could be connected to that kingdom, it seems unlikely given that he doesn't share any of their other traits. But this symbol also appears on a few other beast pirates. In 979, we meet one of my favorite beast pirates, Bao Fan, who wears a mask with the same symbol. This mask is also worn by one pirate wrapped up like a mummy and another pirate who was seen with Who's Who. And while it hasn't been mentioned yet, it's safe to say that these three work for Who's Who. The one we see with him is pretty obvious. Bao Fan is a safe guess too because she works with a cat. If you haven't noticed, Who's Who kinda has a thing for cats. And then there's the mummy who we really don't have much to go off of, but we can guess works for Who's Who by virtue of this eye mask. So now let's move on to the actual theory. At this point, you're probably thinking, what does any of this have to do with Chinese mythology? Well, I never made the connection until I saw these Halloween panels from Full Metal Alchemist and Kaiju Number no. 8. Right away, I thought they looked an awful lot like Bao Fan and these masked pirates. So I do a little self edumacatin and come across the Jiangxi. According to Chinese legend, Taoist priests would reanimate corpses using paper talismans, or fulu, in order to transport the bodies. These reanimated corpses, known as Jiangxi, could only move by hopping due to rigor mortis. It was considered bad luck to even look at the Jiangxi, which is why the priests would ring bells and warn anyone nearby. The real problem though is if they broke loose from the spell. If the Jiangxi broke loose from the control of the priests, they would seek power by absorbing the life force, or qi, of the living. As the Jiangxi absorbed more qi, it regained use of its limbs and joints and could even gain supernatural powers. Finally, the last thing to note about Jiangxi is that on top of the talismans, they are typically depicted wearing the clothes of a government official. That brings us to our big picture question, are Bao Fan and the other masked pirates Jiangxi? Well, the answer is yes and no. I don't think any of them are literally Jiangxi, simply because they all seem very much alive. Kinda hard to be a zombie if you haven't died yet. The one exception is the mummy I mentioned earlier. One might argue that this is actually a reanimated corpse, meaning that the masked pirates have to be Jiangxi. The only issue with this is that Bao Fan has a flying squirrel devil fruit, and as we know about devil fruit users, their fruit leaves their body after death. So even if one or two are actual zombies, it's very unlikely that all the masked pirates are reanimated corpses. At this point, you might be thinking that my little theory isn't looking so good. But hear me out, there's still plenty of evidence. Like I mentioned earlier, Jiangxi are reanimated using paper talismans. And the eye mask we see looks an awful lot like these talismans. The mummy's mask even has some kanji on it, much like the characters on a paper talisman. To be fair though, you might say that a talisman alone makes not a Jiangxi, which is absolutely right. If that were the case, then just about every kunai in Naruto would be a zombie vampire. But let's take another look at Bao Fan. According to Library of Ohara, linked in the description below, Bao Fan is a Chinese card game that literally translates to protect the emperor, which makes sense considering Kaido is an emperor and Bao Fan acts as his personal secretary. In that sense, while she may not look the part, Bao Fan very much plays the role of a government official. 
And of course, Baofan's name ties her to Chinese culture. So like the Jiangxi, Baofan has the paper seal covering her face and appears as a government official. The only part we're missing is those supernatural powers. You know, eating souls and all that business. Unlike the decomposed Jiangxi, Bao Fan and the others can move around just fine. But as Bao Fan demonstrates in chapter 993, this eye mask seems to have its own powers. Bao Fan could see everything the cat could, and both of them wore the same mask. This implies that the masks grant the user observation abilities. Not observation hockey necessarily, just heightened vision like you'd get with telescopes. And as cool as it would be to give him his own version of Frankie's nipple lights, I don't think this extends to who's who. He only has a tattoo of the symbol, while the others have the actual paper talisman. Now I could be wrong, who's who might really have magic nipples. I just tend to doubt it. But this observation ability opens the door to all kinds of stuff. For example, maybe these talismans really can reanimate corpses. Maybe instead of chi, the user has the ability to drain hockey. But now we have to figure out how this all works. Because it's one thing for us to say, oh, it would be so cool if who's who could control ghosts, or it would be sick if Baofan could absorb hockey. But unless we establish some rules for these abilities, there's really no way to know how they might work. So let's start with what we actually know. We know Baofan has this observation ability. Well, it can't be Baofan's devil fruit because she has a flying squirrel fruit. And it can't be who's who's devil fruit because he's got the saber tooth fruit. So if we want to say this is the work of a devil fruit, it can't be either of these two. Now, one idea is maybe the cat has a devil fruit. And while that's not impossible, I tend to doubt it because that would be a strangely specific ability. Again, it seems this ability operates through the masks, so then you'd have to get into the nitty gritty of how a cat managed to master this ability. Which in all fairness wouldn't be the strangest thing considering it's possible for weapons to eat devil fruits. But you might also say that this devil fruit ability belongs to one of the pirates working for who's who. Which is probably your best bet under the devil fruit idea but seems unlikely considering all the beast pirates are either waiting to eat smile fruits or already ate a smile fruit. Now, if this really is the work of a devil fruit, then it's safe to assume that it's a paramecia and runs by fairly narrow rules. It's obviously not a logia or a zoan fruit, and there's no way some random schmuck is gonna have something as rare as a mythical zoan fruit. And I say this would be fairly narrow because as strange as they come, paramecia fruits are all very specific abilities. But rather than a devil fruit, this might just be one of those mysterious abilities in One Piece that just sort of happens. For example, Miss Golden Week could use her paint to manipulate people and that wasn't a devil fruit. Then there's what I think is the strangest one, which is the fact that King is just always on fire. No matches, no gas, the man is just perpetually on fire. And these are things that readers just have to sort of look at and say, all right, I guess so. And if we assume this is the case with these eye masks, then that's where the Jiangxi lore would come in. Rather than explain the abilities, Oda would invite inferences based on what we already know about Jiangxi. But even if that's the case, even if these masked pirates just happen to operate like Jiangxi, there's still the question of how these masks work. With Jiangxi, a priest animates the corpses using the talismans. So in theory, there would need to be some sort of priest or someone who knows how to make the masks and can enchant them. Your first guess is probably who's who since he's got the eye on his chest and seems to be in charge. But there's nothing to suggest who's who is a priest-like character. Nothing about who's who suggests that he knows how to make paper talismans. The fact that he carries a sword suggests that he's a fighter more than anything else. Based off of what we've actually seen, the best bet is Baofan. We've already seen her use this ability with the masks, so it's reasonable to assume she understands how they work. Plus, her ties to Chinese culture might be a hint that she's the key figure behind this ability. So, assuming Baofan really can use these paper talismans, that opens the door to just about anything. Unlike a paramecia fruit, this mysterious ability wouldn't be governed by such narrow rules. In other words, Baofan and the masked pirates might have any ability that we can logically tie to the Jiangxi. And that's why I think Who's Who has Jiangxi in his crew. Because of the mysterious talismans, strange abilities, and ties to Chinese mythology, it looks like his crew might be home to zombie vampires.
And that's the end of this theory. Don't forget to comment about Who's Who, Bao Fan, and the Jiangxi. If you enjoyed this theory, then make sure to like the video. If you'd like more theories like this one, then make sure to subscribe for weekly One Piece and Dr. Stone videos. Thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.